Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Let's Play Art of Reality. Time to continue on where we left off. We're continuing to play in Kenya. The arguably most unique location when it comes to this game that we've seen so far. Like I said, we didn't we didn't get to play in the Americas, or at least I don't remember playing in any of the Americas. We didn't play in Australia or anywhere along those parts. One of the places where we have been playing in was Europe, which uh, when you get to think about it, Europe isn't that big of a place, at least compared to other countries. And uh, Japan. So having to play in Kenya as well is quite a nice, uh, quite a nice bra branching off from the regular locations that we've been playing in. Because that's in an entirely different continent, with entirely different fauna, an entirely different uh, ecosystem, an entirely different climate. And you can really tell because of the huge change in color schemes. Like, think about it, this is the only country where we play, we play in where the color scheme has primarily been brown and... Uh, I don't know, this reddish tint of grey. Reddish, yellowish tint of grey that we have over here. Like, this is the only country where the game used this particular color scheme. In Japan it was always pink or purple and in Europe it was usually either green or... Uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, it's usually green or if we're playing in Norway or stuff like that it's white due to the snow. But that's kind of it, like that's the... Those are all the color schemes you find in Europe. So having this is qu adds quite a bit to the uh, variety, which I really appreciate. I really appreciate games that uh, put in the extra effort to have some variety, particularly racing games, which you you could argue they really don't have to do that because you know they're just racing games. Like they shouldn't have to add variety at all. But the fact that they do, just. Uh, goes to show that they're putting in the extra effort that that's supposed to make the game even a an extra bit special. As far as GOG is concerned, I don't think there are that many racing games, but, and I think this might be the only rally racing game specifically. I, I could be wrong about that, but uh, I don't think there are that many. and. Uh, this is definitely the only rally racing game I've played off of GOG, so uh, I think there's value in this game. Since I haven't played any of the other racing games on, G on GOG, I can't really tell if it's the best or the worst out of all of them. I can definitely say that it has its, uh, its weak points, but also its, uh, its strong points. But for the most part, I would say that this game is... Uh, is it, it was not a regrettable purchase let's say like i do not regret having purchased this game it has a fair bit of content i don't think it would have that much of a re replayability value particularly since i've been constantly randomizing the cars i i'm playing as so i've been through most of them already but I think there, that there are certain things that you can like about it. And there's, there's something to be said about trying to master the, the controls in this game. I'm sure if that's what your goal, you will have a lot of replayability to enjoy. If that's your goal. Personally, that's not what I'm aiming for. But if that's what you're aiming for, then more power to you. Like, I think, I think the asking price for this game, which I forgot even how much it was, it was for like 15 euros or 20 euros. Like, if it's seems within that price range, I think it's definitely worth, uh, worth uh, paying for. And obviously, this might get this video particularly dated, because if inflation goes at the rate that it's been going for the past couple of years, 15 euros might seem like... Uh, it's a bit too little for a game like this. You'll have to measure that uh, for the time when you're watching this video and uh, I guess adjust for inflation yourself to make the calculation before you can say whether it's worth it or not. Either way, I don't believe that this game asks for, for too much. 
a 60 euro price tag is by is obviously not worth for a game like this there's just not enough content in the and variety in gameplay to justify such a high price tag but i don't believe this game goes for 60 euros on gog at all right now at least not at the moment when this video comes up so at half their press price point around 30 euros i think it's it's an acceptable ask. Let's continue. Like 20 euros, 30 euros, I think that's an acceptable ask for a game like this. It's uh, It could be definitely be better, but uh, the gorgeous landscapes are definitely worth it. If not for anything else. Although I will say that even with the annoying controls that this game has it does have a fair and balanced difficulty curve so uh, there's uh, there's that as well so i think there's something you can get out of this game if you go through the tro the trouble of purchasing it on gog i believe this team should also this, this game should also be on steam as well but i could be wrong about that it definitely feels like a steam game I think most of the games which are on GOG are also already available on Steam. Obviously, I would, uh, if you're listening to me speak right now and you're trying to decide whether to buy this game or any of the games that I play on my channel, whether you're you're trying to decide to buy on Steam or GOG, I will. I would honestly. Uh, uh, first ask whether you are particularly invested in the DRM rhetoric or not. Like if you believe that single player games have should not have any internet ba based DRM uh, in them at all, like the game should, fu should functionally work without any internet connection even during installation for the first time, then by all means buy the game on GOG that's the only way to go if you buy it on Steam you ma you mandate that the game have an internet connection at least every so often so so that it authenticates with Steam servers that's the way that the Steam uh, DRM scheme works uh, under the hood like the game whenever you open a game that you have in Steam the game first calls some steam apis behind the scenes and those perform a validation to make sure that the game you're starting up is actually legally bought under the steam account that you're registered on on that machine to make sure that you actually pu purchase the game yourself so there's an internet based drm check every single time you open up the game and so if you if you for whatever reason lose access to the internet for a prolonged period of time like uh, a couple of months when you play the the single player game the your steam games will become inaccessible like they would they i think even if, if if you lack internet for even a single month all of your steam games will refuse to start up eventually because they cannot validate whether you legally purchase them or not which some people have an issue with that. Like many people say, you know, if it's a single player game and I'm the only one p person that plays it, then I, uh, the game should work out of the box. You shouldn't connect to the internet to check on some servers whether they, whether they, whether the, g the game should allow you to play it or not. Like the game should just work out of the box by itself. And the fact of the matter is that certain games particularly steam games just don't work like that so gog games do like gog games whether you have an internet connection or not they will just play the single player games anyway will play out of out of the box whether you have an internet connection or whether you don't for an entire year or more like they will run indefinitely for as long as you want them to run with no internet based checks at all or any drm at all actually which is quite nice so uh, I generally encourage people whenever they buy a single player game to buy it off of GOG. Because that's the way in my opinion that all games should work. And Steam just doesn't do it for me. Like Steam just 
build something else and uh, well the DRM scheme that Steam has is arguably the most acceptable DRM scheme I've ever seen in video games it's still a DRM scheme that's internet based so ultimately I am not a fan of it like it's the best one and the le and the least intrusive DRM scheme I've seen but preferably I would not have any DRM scheme at all than even Steam's DRM so that's why I encourage people to buy off, off of GOG anyways that's it for today's video uh, I've been rambling for quite a while we eventually ended up on 6th place again I will leave the last stage for the next episode so thank you very much for watching if you want to get in touch with me I have a Mastodon account as well as a Matrix room that you can join details of which you can find in the description of this video and in the meantime thank you very much for watching and see you next time